So you'd like to get started virtualizing some stuff at home. You have options like VMware, Microsoft Hyper-V, as well as Proxmox. Today, in this tutorial, we're gonna show you how to install Proxmox step-by-step -step so that you can start virtualizing stuff at home. Hey, welcome back, so I'm Techno Tim, and today we're gonna talk about virtualizing systems using Proxmox. So Proxmox is an open source virtualization system. It allows you to share the resources on one machine across many virtual machines. So this is handy if you have a server or an old PC and you need to run multiple operating systems. Let's say for instance, you wanna run Linux and Windows on the same system. Virtualization allows you to do that. Keep in mind that these will be guest machines and not running on the host. Proxmox will be your operating system. So let's walk through how to install Proxmox. It's really simple. The first thing you're gonna need is a computer with decent hardware specs that can run Proxmox. The next thing you'll need is installation media. This is a 16 gig, but an eight gig will work fine too. The next thing we'll need to do is go out to proxmox.com and click on download. And we'll wanna download the Proxmox VE installer. Then you'll wanna download something like Etcher or Rufus to flash our USB drive. I chose Etcher, but anyone will work. The only thing left to do is plug this USB drive into the PC you're gonna install Proxmox on and boot from it. When we boot this machine, we're gonna be sure to select our USB drive. Then we'll be greeted with the Proxmox installer. Then we'll just wait for Proxmox to load. Then we'll be greeted with the EULA. If you agree with this, agree to it. Then we'll see our hard drives that are installed on this machine. We'll want to be sure to choose the hard drive we wanna install Proxmox on. Nothing else can reside on this drive, so be sure to choose the one that you wanna install Proxmox on. I'm gonna install it on this 20 gig drive. Then we'll select our country and time zone. Then we'll give it a root password. This will be used to log into the web UI as well as SSH. Then we'll choose the network interface that we'll be using. It's most likely gonna be the default here. The only thing you'll probably need to configure is the IP address you want this to listen on. But in our case, we're gonna keep the default. Then we'll click install and we'll wait for it to install. Okay, it looks like the installer's done. Let's reboot. After it reboots, it should start booting into Proxmox. So once you see the login prompt, that means it's running. So we're good to go. Take note of the IP address in the port at the top. This is the IP address and port that we'll use to access Proxmox from the web UI. Then we'll open a browser and we'll go to the IP address that it's hosted on. So it was HTTPS 192.168.0.208 and it's gonna be on port 8006. Once we get here, you'll get a warning about it being a self-signed certificate Normally, you wouldn't proceed, but since this is something we just spun up on our local network, it's okay to do. We want to proceed here. Now we're prompted with the sign-in screen. This is going to be the account root and the password we created. Once we sign in, we'll see this warning about not having a subscription. That's okay, and you'll see this every time you sign in. If you'd like to support Proxmox, you could sign up for a subscription. Otherwise, just click OK. And so now we're greeted with the data center screen. So this is an overview of all of our nodes. We only have one node right now, but if we had more, we'd see more. So here's our node called PVE, and we can see our storage. Since we're only running one node, we'll spend most of our time in this PVE section or whatever you named your node. But if you look, you can see a summary of all of the system resources that are being used. So this system has 24 CPUs, 16 gigs of RAM, and you can see my hard drive space. You can add things like notes to this server. We can actually even shell in using a browser. So rather than SSHing into this server, we can just do it from here. Then we'll see other things under system, like network, certificates, DNS, host, time, syslog. In the update tabs, you'll see any updates that are available for our system. Under firewall, we can create firewall rules for this system. Under disks, we'll see all of our attached disks. So you can see dev sdb is where Proxmox is installed. And then you can see dev sda. This is a 300 gig hard drive I had attached to this system. So after this, your Proxmox server is set up and ready to install some guest OSs on. 
Check out my other videos to see how to install a Linux guest as well as install a Windows guest. If you found something helpful in this video, please remember to like and subscribe to this video and share it with your friends. Thanks so much for watching and until next time, stream on my friends.